Mac Voices is supported by Text Expander by Smile. Find out just how powerful a few keystrokes can be at TextExpander.com. Hi, I'm Chuck Joyner, and this is a Mac Voices episode from NAB 2019. Sometimes the interview schedules just don't work out the way you'd like them to, and I wasn't able to connect with the folks I wanted to at Cinemaker. But I was so impressed by some of the features that they have introduced this time around that I want to make sure that you get to see them. And I was able to record one of the demo sessions along with a couple other people uh, watching. So you may or may not be able to hear their questions, and, and you will definitely be able to hear the, uh, the demonstrator's answers. But I think it's really important that you take a good hard look at this. Uh, Cinemaker is a device that lets you use iPhones and iPads um, in a multi-cam kind of setup, in a switcher kind of setup, so that you can uh, produce very unique, very unusual, very professional looking video. So with that, enjoy this demo of Cinemaker. Thanks for watching. Continuing on our conversation, uh, this, is, this is Cinemaker, which is basically live video production um, that operates on an iPad. Our, our actual product is an iPad app uh, that's downloadable from the App Store, and we also sell it as a solution. But the idea is, is that I've got one, two, three iPhones um, sitting here on the set, and as quickly as that, the iPhones, um, the iPhones now come up down here at the bottom of the screen. Camera one, camera two, and camera three um, are all there, and I have, and I can do live switching by simply tapping the preview monitors, uh, and it's got a very robust um, media graphics engine. Uh, we can add graphics directly off of the um, camera roll on the iPad and switch, select whatever shots we want and move them about and place them in frame. We have picture in picture in this. So one of the cameras or a feed coming off of a projector could come in and show up over the shoulder. Um, and then uh, we can have it saved and then just here it is, I can just turn it on in the middle of the show. Uh, so I'm switching cameras and you still see the, the picture up there. Uh, this also has the ability to bring in um, video. So I go to local storage, I could actually get a YouTube video if I wanted as well, um, but I can grab a video that's already been, been shot. I can bring it in and not only move it about, but I can expand it to full screen. So when I save it, in the middle of a production, I can, there it is, I can just click it on and hit the play button, and now it's full frame, so this is all the B-roll that you want that can ultimately be uh, included in your production. I can turn it off very easily as well. Uh, with the iPhone cameras, we can actually control them, each individually, from the iPad. So if you're a one-man show, ah, I'm not dead on, I gotta be dead on. So if you're a one-man show and you want camera, let's say camera two, to go do a close-up, I just go into camera two and I can do a nice little zoom. It's not as clean as I'd like it to be, but it at least gives me the ability. Well, you go in and get that close shot ready for the switch. Get it ready for the switch. Yeah, I do it all offline. I could do this offline. Yeah. And then each, I, each every, everyone's a preview. So, okay. so we could do that and uh, I can color correct, I could exposure correct uh, right here from the iPad, uh, from my uh, and phone. The guest comes in and they're wearing a, lit, a really lit up white shirt and it's going to blow out crazy so you can keep it on the Absolutely. until you get that adjusted. And get Actually, to, to that exact point, this little button right here is our exposure and focus. This is a panic button. So when things go off kilter, it'll, uh, it'll auto correct. Iris and, I auto iris and, and do it all on a, its own. And um, it, you it must be from a production back then. Yes, indeed. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so here's all of your iPhone audio capture sources. So every iPhone's a microphone. And uh, in this particular case, I have my volume up on, on camera two. I could plug in handheld mics, lavalier mics, boom mics, into the iPhone uh, headphone jack, 
and, and it'll send the, the audio directly here to um, the corresponding phone that it's plugged into. And I have up to eight inputs. Eight iPhones could collect and capture from uh, various different sources. Uh, finally, this is chroma key. A green screen background on every camera can basically give you different backgrounds. You can you can correct and and dial in the, also, um, you can dial in the all all from here. So that's basically what the control panel does. And these, by the way, are uh, transitions. This is a, a dissolve. So I can set dissolve to three seconds, and now my edits or my switching shows a dissolve instead of a straight edit. So um, if, if that's something that you prefer, you can always do that at any time. So um, going back to, this is the red button. This is, where, this is where it all begins. All we do if we want to start a production is hit record. And what it's defaulting to is record only. But we can go live to YouTube channel. We can go live to Facebook channels and we can go live to, uh, to our, any RTMP destination as long as we have the URL and the server key. So that would be your smart channel or whatever. Yeah, wherever, wherever you want to go. So right now, our, we only have the ability to record today, so I'm just going to hit the start button. Now the record button it turns to a stop button, and the recording has begun, and we're three seconds in, and I'm switching my cameras, and oh, there's that dog. Oh, I'll, I'll fix that in edit mode. But um, actually, let's turn off the dog now. But I will still fix it in edit mode. And um, I'm switching. And I do want the movie to play. So we're now full screen uh, with the B-roll. And we want that uh, to go for another second or two. And then we pause it and stop it. And when it's done, I continue to switch cameras. And... Um, Let's, uh, let's also bring in a, a graphic that we had previously, uh, and we're done. So I'm going to now stop the recording. And what's going to happen now is it's going to ask us if we want to continue the live stream or recording, or do we want to go to the editor. So we're going to go to the editor by simply selecting Live Edit. And what's now going to happen is this is the edit mode, the exact same interface, but what we're going to watch is playback on the program monitor, but you're also going to see all of these as ISOed recordings in perfect synchronization. Each one of them are ISOed in perfect sync. So the playback button allows me to start the playback of what we previously recorded. There's our dog. I didn't want it there, so hold on a second. There's our switch. We'll, we'll let it go for another second or two. Audio's playing. There's another switch color coordinated to the various timeline um, points in the timeline. But where Cinemaker really stands out is in the, the idea of being able to go back at any point in the recording. And if that do I don't want that dog there, all I, all I do is hit the uh, overwrite button. And I can overwrite camera decisions, audio decisions, or graphics media decisions. So what I'm going to do is just allow myself to correct the um, to correct the the fact that there's a graphic I don't want, and I'm going to turn it off. Now I'm going to hit the record button, and it's recording without it. It's recording without it. How about the durations? So if I wanted to, that's a great question. I'm gonna turn I'm gonna turn my camera edits on and turn everything else off. And I'm gonna go back and I'm basically just imagine ah, that I didn't want this particular edit. I want to clean it up and do it fresh. So I can now basically hit my record button and my edit is now going to be done. I can completely redo it. So, so imagine all I do when I really want to record is just record and sit down as a one-man show and do my show. 
I don't have a director here to switch it for me. I can actually record it and ISO all the cameras and then come back and play back and, re and switch it for the first time. I could add graphics, I can bring my audio in and out however I want, and that's doing it on the fly. So you see the, ti the timeline's changing with the cameras that I'm selecting through this whole thing, and, it's, and that's it. So, uh, this then can be, this, the, this has a recording only, I can now set my resolution uh, and I can render this as a final product and by simply hitting render video you'll see that the progress is going it's actually rendering it as a high resolution video and in a few seconds I'll be done with it and at that point I can upload it to any of my channels on YouTube to Facebook to Instagram I can save it into the cloud as a production that I'm going to deal with later, and it's done. Unless I want to refine it in Final Cut or Premiere. I can not only dump it into those, but we have, we've enabled a, a little app that, that we put on the, on the computer that's running the software, the Final Cut or Premiere software, and it'll basically recognize that Cinemaker's open on this project and they'll recognize that Final Cut's open and it's going to ask me if I want to move this project over and within seconds it will actually move it in onto the PC I open up a Final Cut new project and with the XML file that comes over with this entire project I open that XML file and it will completely completely intact so it takes seconds to move the entire multi-camera video production with all the graphics, all of the cameras, the program that I, that I edited, and it's ready for... Um, so here's a, here's a four-camera shoot we did yesterday at an event in Final Cut Pro. And it's now... So, sorry. Oh, it's at the end of it. So if I hit the play button, so there it is, and it's 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 playing, and if I go into my timeline at the bottom. There's all the audio tracks, and you'll get to see, that's the video program out. These are all the graphics that I layered in throughout the production, which was an hour and a half production, and it took me about less than a minute to get this to come in, completely ready for Final Cut, all synchronized. So it brought, it brought all of the, of the uh, video tracks over. And, but I could still do the editing and switch here in Final Cut? You could do anything you want to it. The, the, the fact is, is that everything is perfectly synchronized from the production that happened here, and you can do anything you want to it in Final Cut. Color correction, audio correction, you can layer in new graphics, new you could new sound effects, you could redo your edits if you wanted to. But you got 80% of it already done here. Impressive. Thank you. Thank you. The website is? The website is Cinemaker, and that's spelled C-I-N-A-M-A-K-E-R.com. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you, Chuck. Appreciate you coming by. Visit MacVoices.com for show notes and to connect with Chuck on social media. Get involved in our Facebook group or like our Facebook page, and get more out of your Apple tech with Mac Voices Magazine, free on Flipboard and on the web. And if you find value in it all, consider supporting us through either our Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash macvoices, or by making a one-time donation via the PayPal link on our front page and in the show notes of each episode. 
you will join these fine people who help bring you Mac Voices. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media at backbeatmedia.com. Bandwidth provided by Cashfly at cashfly.com.